Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Benjamin Crudwig, and this is the Benjamin Crudwig Fiber Arts and Design Channel. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that intro was, but hello everyone, welcome back. This is the channel where you get all sorts of textile goodness uh, and fashion goodness. It's great. Whether it's crochet in the previous video or weaving, uh, I do it all here. I'm coming to you with this video uh, because it's time to start working on the Vipers in the Ivy suit coat, suit jacket, suit, three-piece suit project. Um, I think I'll have enough fabric for this. We'll see. We're, I'm going to make the fabric. Anyways, uh, I'm really psyched. I have finally kind of gotten the mental capacity to get this project started, and my loom, as you can see over here, is empty, completely empty, and I'm kind of in the middle of some projects right now, and I wanted a weaving project. I have a sewing project, I have a crochet project, but I don't have a weaving project going on right now, so it's time. So in this video, um, I'm going to be making the accent fabric, which will be up on the shoulders, um, almost like epaulettes, but not quite. Um, but it's going to be a shiny tencel fabric that is sort of color changing. It's not actually color changing. It's not actually iridescent, but it will be visually color changing, which means uh, when you look at it from one direction, it'll be one color. When you look at it from another direction, it'll be another color. And if you look at it straight on, it'll be a different color. So um, I'm going to give you a rundown of what I'm going to be doing today, uh, or at least over the next few minutes of this video. So while I'm not working with structure here, I'm not doing like any twill or anything of that ilk, what is going to come into play here is the color of the yarn and how our eyes interact with it. So the two yarns that I'm using for this project are right here. This is yarn from Valley Yarns. It's yarn.com. Um, it's a 10 cell, it's 8-2 10 cell. So 8-2 is the weight of the fabric, or 8-2 is the, the weight of the thread. It's fairly thin, um, what you might call like a, a fine lace weight if you are into knitting or crochet. And I have two colors here. I have slate and I have forest. So forest right here is the green. It's variegated, very, very beautiful. It's got some warm greens in there and a couple of cool greens. It definitely reminds me of sunlight dappling through a forest, right? And then the slate gray is just a nice medium gray. Um, very lovely. Both of them have a sheen. That's tencel. Tencel is a plant-based fiber, so uh, it is got a nice weight to it, like a, a light, it's nice and lightweight, I should say. And the process in which it's made, it has a nice sheen. It's technically a two-ply, so um, fairly, fairly nice yarn. I, I, I've used it before in a recent project and I really like it. Uh, you can see I have the gold and the orange here that I've used in a fairly recent project. If you see my Clover cosplay, it's in there. I'll put a link up in the top here. Um, somewhere up above me, you'll see a link to that video. So again, this is just going to be plain weave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the forest green in the warp, which is the vertical threads. It's going to be an eight yard warp at uh, 16 ends per inch, which brings us to about 416. Yeah, 416 ends for this project. I'm going to do a full width on my baby wolf loom, which is 26 inch weaving width. And I'm using every last yard of this fabric or of this yarn in the warp. The gray is going to be the weft. So what this means is in a vertical orientation, if you look at the fabric head on, you'll see a nice mix of the green and the gray. If you look at it from the side, you will see it um, in a more green light that you'll see more of the variegated green. And if you look at it from like above or below, um, if your fabric is laying down, you'll see more of the gray. With the technique that I'm gonna use on the shoulders, which is going to be a smocked dragon scale pattern um, or a snake scale pattern, it's you'll it'll make more sense in an upcoming um, part of this video where I do a test of this. Um, what that means is that you'll see, depending on how you look at that fabric or how it's bending over the form of the body, 
you'll see they're more green or more gray. And I am super, super excited to, to see what this looks like in practice. Oh my God, Rowan just started playing with the toy. <laughs> And is just like going nuts over there. Oh my gosh. So anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and get my warping board out and start warping up this uh, green. And you'll see that I'll start. I don't know if I'll get to threading the loom today. I would like to, but the process of warping 416 threads takes a while. Um, my arms are tired from doing arm day the other day. So, anyways, before I get into the rest of the video, if you are excited by this video and want to see more like it, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and a subscribe to this channel. I've been putting out content usually once to twice per month and doing more long form content of, of this sort. So um, if you like textiles, you like crochet, you like weaving, you like knitting, please give me a follow. Um, this is going to be another slow fashion project. It's going to take me probably a few months from start to finish to do this project. So I hope that you join me for this ride. I'm going to set these down. I'm going to go get my stuff and start, start the process. See you in the next clip. So I am fully slayed here on my read on the current project and I am about just under three quarters of the way threaded. So what I'm doing this time, um, normally I just do a straight threading um, and I have excess heddles on the sides. When you're doing a thin project that doesn't really matter but I am doing the full weaving width. So what tends to happen is you can see that there's a little bit of draw in at the sides where it starts going through the harnesses and the heddles, uh, the heddles on the harnesses. <laughs> and I still have some excess heddles on the side, but what I've been doing is I've been doing like repeats of four or five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four or four, five times. And then I'm separating those bundles by two empty heddles on each harness. Um, and what that's going to do is it's making this draw in a lot less severe. So that means that the abrasion that the threads might face is going to be a lot less. So that's your weaving hack for the day, your weaving tip for the day. <laughs> Um, and when I get home from work tonight, I am going to finish threading. I'm going to wind on the warp and hopefully start weaving.
fabric is done. Yes, beans, I'm also excited. Oh! Stunning. Y'all, I'm s <laughs> this is doing exactly what I needed it to do and wanted it to do. I'm super excited about that. And then at the very end here, I just wanted to do some color swatching. Um, and so now I have like a little kerchief. Yay, super excited. I'll wear that this fall. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off of the loom um, I'm going to serge up the edges, and then after that, I am going to wash it and hang it out to dry, and uh, hopefully you'll see that in the next clip. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here's the fabric all washed and dried and ironed, and you'll have to come back to part two to see what I make with all this wonderful fabric. I'm so excited to start patterning this out and doing this mocking technique I talked about earlier. See you then!